there is way too much happening in Kenya. And that is why once in a while in one video, we'll do a couple of highlights before we go into our main topic, like today. So before the controversial DP Ruto interview, a few highlights of stuff that you may have missed. Okay. Now, the former managing director of Kenya Re has been fined 15.2 million. For what? For embezzling, for being found guilty of embezzling 7.2 million. Okay? So he's being, uh, he's being fined almost double what he embezzled. Not jailed, he's being fined. Now, on the same day, in a Kibira court, a Kibira laborer yeah, who was found guilty of stealing safari boots worth Kenya shillings 2500 about $25, and 400 shillings, about $4, from a border board operator, is jailed for 20 years. Same country, same laws, only in Kenya. I don't have anything more to say about that. This next one, I'm sure many of you missed. A Mombasa woman called Betty Olaba is threatening to commit suicide. Why? Because her mother, her dear mother, she caught her dear mother red-handed in a lodging with her husband having sex. Her husband's name is David Mwangi. Yes, you heard me right. Her own mother, her blood mother, the woman who gave birth to her with her husband. And the last item, I had a very big argument with uh, Hezron. Hezron says, Chris, Bwana, this is not news. Unajua mambo ya news ni dog, man bites dog, not dog bites man. Ukishazoya dog bites man, inakuwa stale, inaisha lather. It becomes too normal. So look for man bites dog. Uh, you, you stood with and I. <laughs> Translation, Chris, this is not news. It's only news when the man bites the dog. If the dog bites the man, and it happens so frequently, it ceases to be news. Well, let me just say, I thought you wanted to know. Yeah, and I think I'm right. A 24-year-old woman called Joan Mnene who is a fourth year student at Kenyatta University, okay, claims, claims that she is four weeks pregnant with a baby belonging to the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. The lady is not saying Serakali Saidia. The lady is saying Wanainchi Saidia. And I'm not sure how she wants people to help her. Yeah, this student who is seeking a Bachelor of Science degree in leisure and recreation management at the Kenyatta University. She is complaining that unlike before, she can no longer reach baby daddy. Now in a way I agree with Hezron, this is not news, especially for a man who has confessed in the past to being Baba Abi. You remember that one? But I don't want to say anything more. Yeah, <laughs> let me just leave it at that. Now we'll go for a very brief commercial break. And when we come back, we will dive straight in to this very controversial interview that the Deputy President gave to a TV station. Stay with me. Welcome back. Now, there should be no doubt, absolutely no doubt, on the mind of any Kenyan, that Hussein Mohammed is the best interviewer yeah, in the press that we have in the country at the moment. There should be no doubt. He is very persistent. Yeah, once he starts in a certain line of uh, questioning, he will not cease until he gets an answer. The guy is very good. And the advantage of having somebody like Hussein Mohammed interviewing a politician that Kenyans want to confirm certain things, while others want to take a closer look at yeah, whether or not they are presidential material, is that there is no way yeah, you're going to come out of such an interview without seeing the truth 
right in front of you. Now, you know, seeing the truth in a politician is not easy. Yeah, because politics is a game of lying and not being caught. <laughs> when you lie and you get caught, then now you become a liar. But if you lie and you never get caught, people call you a good politician. And by the way, I'm talking about the world over, not just in Kenya. Now, this one is for the sake yeah, of those of us who get very upset when a politician lies. I, how could he tell a lie? How? This is crazy. Why is he lying? <laughs> Relax. That's normal for politician. Yeah. And as I've said, the only difference or the only rule is thou shall not get caught in your lies. Now, later on in this video, I shall give you a simple trick or a tip yeah, that will enable you to be able to conclusively yeah, identify the times, the number of times the deputy president told lies on this live television interview on Citizen TV. Now, of course, this is the interview that birthed that big controversy about the alleged meeting yeah, after the elections between D.P. William Ruto and Raila Odinga. The deputy president claims that Raila made contact or tried to make contact four times. He even claims they spoke on the phone yeah, at, at one juncture. And the deputy president told Kenyans yeah, the gist of that conversation is that Raila Odinga was telling Ruto that he has had a raw deal, yeah, that he should reconsider his situation and his position within the Jubilee Party. Bila Kizungumingi, what the Deputy President is telling us is that Raila tried to pull him to his side so that they fix President Uhuru Kenyatta politically. And they were supposed to do this using DP Ruto's numbers and influence within Parliament and also Raila Odinga's numbers and influence within Parliament. And <laughs> on the surface of it, it would have been very easy. Now, there's a very simple and conclusive test yeah, to determine whether the deputy president was telling lies. Yeah, and as I said, we shall come to that towards the tail end of this video. So stay with me. Now, the truth about this interview is that the deputy president was cornered. And I can already hear DP Ruto supporters taking in this video saying to me, Chris, we know you hate the deputy president. We know you don't like the deputy president. I can already hear them saying that. But I'm sorry. I'm just stating facts which we all saw and which we can all verify because this particular interview is available on YouTube. I love this situation because for once, yeah, anybody will be able to verify who is out of line in this instance. Me or DP Ruto diehard supporters. And by the way, I've put a link to that uh, interview, yeah, which the deputy president recently had with Hussein Mohammed of Citizen TV at his residence. Yeah, it's on the top uh, right hand corner of your screen right now. So you can click on it when you finish taking in this video. You can go and uh, watch the entire very long video, <laughs> very long interview for yourself. It is super fascinating. Trust me. Now, I know the burning question <laughs> I've put on your mind. Yes. How exactly was the deputy president cornered? Well, he was cornered in many instances. Yeah, but the most obvious and the most glaring and the most shocking from where I sit was when he was trying very hard yeah, to put across the idea that he's fully behind President Uru Kenyatta, but is against Raila Odinga. Or rather, as he said, Raila Odinga has a history of breaking up political parties. Yeah, and he gave the example of Kanu. And therefore, the deputy president said, Raila Odinga's mission in the handshake is just to break Jubilee. Yeah, he has come into the executive, he's very influential in the executive, but his intentions are not good. Now, DP foot soldiers are on record for directly attacking the president. Yeah, but Ruto himself, the deputy president, has never directly attacked the president. But it is true, what your foot soldiers say is what you're saying. Yeah, because your foot soldiers, 
your very close supporters cannot say anything that contradicts what you stand for. That is the truth. Still, the deputy president was trying to sell us this idea that is fully behind the president. And that is only some people who are trying to interfere yeah, with that closeness, but they will not succeed. The deputy president was trying to sell the idea to Kenyans that Jubilee is still solidly united. It's still a party, yeah, despite the threats by one Ray Odinga. But Hussein Mohammed, using his questions, managed to prove that this is a ridiculous lie. The high point for me in this particular discussion was when Hussein Mohammed proved yeah, that there's no way that can be the truth. Because everything the deputy president is saying, everything the president, the deputy president is doing, is contradicting yeah, what he's trying to sell to Kenyans. You publicly attack your own director of criminal investigations, appointed by the executive. How? How do you do that? And yet you are the appointing authority. And then, in sharp contrast, the president of the Republic of Kenya praises the directorate of criminal investigations. He praises them so much that he goes beyond that and honors George Kenoti with a national award. Yeah, remember last December? He was honored. He was decorated by the president as a true national hero. For anybody who was paying attention, the deputy president was completely cornered so that he looked like <laughs> he's just telling lies during the day. Which brings us to that question. How is it possible yeah, even without following the, the debate, even without closely following what they're saying, to determine when the deputy president is telling a lie and when he's not. I shall reveal that secret immediately after the upcoming brief break. You really don't want to miss this one. I'll be back in a bit. Welcome back. Now you're a wife and you suspect your husband is telling you lies. Okay, so you just be patient, bide your time and wait for an opportunity. Yeah, when you know some truth, which you know when you confront your husband with, he'll tell a lie. So one day he was out with the kids. Yeah, and your small daughter who is very close to you comes back and tells you, Daddy alipitia madiflani. <laughs> Translation, uh, my dad passed somewhere. Okay, so you know he passed in some flat yeah, where there's a girl he's seeing, another woman. He had the kids in the car and he just drove past yeah, very quickly. Yeah, he stopped, gave her something and then uh, drove off. So you confront him yeah, and you keep all your emotions in check. Yeah, and what you're doing is that you're closely observing him as you ask him the question. So you ask him, I say, last Sunday, when you took the kids for swimming, did you pass anywhere? His nose might twitch, yeah, he might look on the side, he might uh, scratch the back of his head. There are signs, there's something which everybody does when they lie. So you take note of those mannerisms very carefully. You can even go and write them down somewhere. Write them down in great detail. Yeah, put down all the details, lest you forget. Now, <laughs> you have a weapon, yeah. Every time you ask your husband something, you'll immediately know whether he's telling you the truth or not. Every time his nose twitches, for example, you know it's a lie, yeah. You know these are unconscious things we do, okay. And you can't help it. You can't stop it. You'll definitely do it every time you're being untruthful. So back to the interview with the Deputy President and Hussein Mohammed of Citizen. Okay? You just observe carefully when they are talking about something of which you know the truth. Let me give you a very good example. The elections, the last elections in August 2017. When the Deputy President talks about people who can never accept election results, when they lose, you know that there's a lie here. Yeah, you know that he's not telling the whole truth. You know that there's a good reason not to accept some certain election results. Yeah, because rigging has taken place. The business of pop, 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 
has taken place. Very carefully observe the mannerisms of the deputy president when he's talking about that issue. Yeah. And that's it. You have your weapon. Yeah, you have your tool to be able to determine each and every time he tells lies. Now on the issue of four meetings, yeah, or four times Raila Odinga tried to get in touch with the deputy president, you will realize, yeah, using this method, that he was not telling us the whole truth. What he was telling us were lies. Now I want you to get me fully. I don't want you to misunderstand me. You know something can happen and then you twist it to your advantage politically. I'll give you a very good example with the deputy president. The deputy president left ODM party in a half. At one point in time, the deputy president was a very senior member of the Orange Democratic Movement. Okay? Now, how does the deputy president give that story nowadays? The circumstances surrounding how he left the party. He always says he was chased out of ODM. Yeah, he was hounded out of ODM. However, that is not the truth. Okay? Because we know, for instance, shortly before he left, he had been elevated to deputy party leader of ODM. Now, you cannot be elevated to such a high position of a party if people within the party, if their real motive is to get rid of you, to remove you, chase you out of the party. No way. So, the truth is, uh, the deputy president left ODM. That is true. But the circumstances under, under which he left the party, the way he portrays them, are completely untrue. So this issue about meeting Raila, it is possible that it is true there are circumstances under which they met, or there are circumstances under which either of the party requested for a meeting. You know, we are told the best way to tell a believable lie is to mix the truth with a lie. <laughs> You'll get away with it. And so this issue of meeting with Raila has some truth. Yeah, there's some truth somewhere there hidden. Yeah, but though it has been presented to us, it is totally untruthful. Yeah, the circumstances which we have been made to believe were the case by the deputy president are totally untrue. Now, the following point is very significant. Why would somebody want to twist the true facts of something? Yeah, well, there's usually only one reason. The only reason is because the true facts would paint them in bad light. Because... Why would you want to adjust the truth, yeah, if it brings you out positively, yeah? Why? You wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't skew the truth. You wouldn't twist the truth, yeah, if the circumstances of that truth, yeah, show you in good light. You wouldn't. And therefore, the conclusion we must come to is that these meetings with Raila Odinga, alleged meetings with Raila Odinga, or alleged uh, attempts to meet Raila Odinga, the truth was changed by the deputy president because the truth yeah, will never paint the deputy president in good light concerning those meetings or alleged meetings or attempts to have meetings. To me, that is a bombshell and it tells us exactly how the deputy president operates. And after such a revelation, if I was the deputy president's political opponent, I would be very, very wary. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.